pray with me once again. Lord, as we uh, hear your message and as we uh, listen uh, to your word, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you this morning. Oh Lord, you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. So our summer series on Ephesians is almost uh, uh, coming to an end uh, as, we, uh, uh, as we are covering uh, this morning, uh, uh, chapter 5. And Ephesians continues to urge us, Christians, to be clothed in new humanity and to live in love. Uh, and according to its fifth chapter, this means to live in love and to stay awake. What do you mean by staying awake? Perhaps this call to stay awake reminds you of a gospel story we often hear uh, in the season of Advent, the parable of the ten bridesmaids. The ten bridesmaids were waiting for the bridegroom to show up for the banquet. And we are told that the half of them were wise for they took their lamps with extra oil but the other half were foolish, for they took their lamps without flasks of oil. The arrival of the bridegroom was delayed, and he finally showed up at midnight, the time of the day their lamps were necessary to give light to the darkness. And only the five wise ones were prepared, and we are told these five greeted the bridegroom and joined the wedding banquet, while the other five could not. They shouted, Please let us in also. And the bridegroom replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Harsh, harsh. So what's the lesson of this parable? Jesus says, Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know or you know neither the day nor the hour. According to this parable, staying awake means to be like the wise bridesmaids who are able to light their lamps in the darkness of the midnight hour with the extra flask of oil they had prepared. In short, staying awake meant for the bridesmaids to give light to the darkness to be children of light. And this is what we read in today's scripture as well. It is written in verse 8 to 9, For once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Further, we read together this morning that children of light are careful about how they live that they live as people, as wise people, rather than as unwise or foolish. So we see this close association between light and wisdom. Being people of light is being people of wisdom, and being people of wisdom means being people of light. And this is how we stay awake, by becoming children of light and wisdom. Another story that I am reminded of is a story from Ezekiel, perhaps a story most familiar to us by a song called Damn Dry Bones. You guys know that song? Dry Bones, Dry Bones. All righty. Well, Prophet Ezekiel, as we all know, uh, had a dream, uh, uh, a vision where he found himself in the middle of a valley full of dry bones. It is the valley of the shadow of death. It is the place of darkness. And God asked Ezekiel, Can these bones live? The prophet responded, Oh Lord, you know. Perhaps almost scoffing at God for asking such an obvious question. Or perhaps deflecting, giving a straight answer for he did not know. Nonetheless, God told Ezekiel, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinew on you, 
and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So Ezekiel did just as God told him to do. And what he witnessed was the rattling of the bones coming together and then sinews growing and flesh mounting and skins appearing but still there was no breath in them. So God said to Ezekiel, Again, prophesy to the breath. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. Ezekiel did as he was told, and a vast multitude of them lived. And what's the lesson from this story from Ezekiel? It is that even when we tell ourselves amid darkness that we are done for, that our hope is lost, and that we are overlooked, when we feel like we are just as good as dead, it is the Lord our God who speaks to us. I am going to open your graves, and I am going to bring you back, and you shall live. I am going to put my spirit within you, my breath within you, and you shall live. So in light of Ezekiel's vision, staying awake means to rise from the dead. It is to let the breath of God fill us and renew us so that we may live. It is what it is, it is said in Psalm 23. Yeah, though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. It is whether we are in the valleys or on the mountaintops that we live alive in the Spirit, praising and worshiping our God with our singing and giving thanks to God at all times and for everything. So as God's children, we are called to live in love. We are to become children of life, of light, and of wisdom. It is God the Father who gives life through God's breath. Genesis, Jesus the Son is true, the true light. In Him was life, the life was the light of all people. The light shines in their darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. John chapter 1. And the Holy Spirit is the wisdom who keeps us, guards us, and as we draw closer, closer to God's understanding and closer to God's will for us. Proverbs. To, sto- to stay awake in some is to be filled with God's love in Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. And those who stay awake give light to the world, live wisely, and give thanks and praise at all times. And my friends, it is easy to stay awake when the day is bright and when we are on a mountaintop. It is easy to stay awake when everything is smooth sailing. We are full of life, full of light, and full of wisdom. We become confident, graceful, and relaxed. We can see the world with clear vision. We find ourselves in the best position to bring out our best selves to God and to one another. And we find it easy to give thanks and praise. But not so much when the night is dark and when we are in a valley. It is difficult to stay awake When we are surrounded by darkness, we get drowsy and our vision gets narrower. We cannot see clearly what is ahead of us or who are are around us. We become stressed, anxious, and paralyzed. We fall asleep on our true self, unable to bring the best version of ourselves to God and to one another. Whether rather we take part in the unfruitful works of darkness, harming God, harming one another, and harming ourselves. 
we are tempted to numb ourselves with debaucheries, whatever help us escape our darkness, our reality. So we can, we can simply avoid facing it. And we find it difficult to give thanks and praise. Rather, we say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. And what the whole of our scripture, our Bible, reveals to us over and over and over and over again is that being children of God, what makes us Christians is not trusting that God will somehow trans transport us to a, new, to a mountaintop right now, but rather trusting that God is with us as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. This is called faith. Being able to take one step forward in spite of darkness. And that one brave step forward in darkness is called light, light, and wisdom. Because we do it in faith, trusting in God. Our step forward in spite of darkness is our testimony. Those early churches receiving this letter called Ephesians from Paul were living in the darkness. They thought Jesus would come back in their lifetime, but he was nowhere to be found. Rather, they, are, they were witnessing growing hostility between the Jews and the Gentiles of violent hostility that even jeopardized the unity of the church. Perhaps they were saying to themselves, our bones are dried up, our hope is lost, we are cut off completely. And we are not so different, are we? The pandemic and the polarization of our society have been our valley of dry bones, a long season of darkness with no end. The official death toll so far worldwide is 4.42 million people. And as I mentioned earlier, the daily cases are now rising again here in the U.S. While people are still hurting one another each day as the polarization of healthcare never ceases. Furthermore, even this past week, we are reminded of how thick the darkness is that surrounds our humanity. The latest update on Haiti's earthquake is 1,300 people dead and more than 5,700 5, people injured. How about what is going on with Afghanistan? The words cannot describe the amount of terror we see in those people who are desperately trying to flee from the Taliban's takeover. So desperate that they would even cling onto a flying plane with their bare hands. And we cannot fathom the suffering the people of Afghanistan are facing today and in the future, especially the women and children. And these are just the news amplified on our screens that I am mentioning. I cannot possibly understand the kind of darkness you and our neighbors are going through just as no one can understand the kind of darkness I am going through right now. Darkness is through and through. Today's lesson in our Bible acknowledges the darkness around us. The dar acknowledges the darkness that surrounds us. And it is not asking us to be better despite the darkness. And it is not asking us to do more despite the darkness. And it is not asking us to suck it up amidst the darkness. And certainly it is not asking us to escape our darkness. But rather it is asking us to stay awake amidst the darkness. It is asking us to carry the light that was given to us through Christ in the midst of Christ, in the midst of darkness, by letting Christ, the true light, live within us 
and to dwell inside us. It is asking us to live wisely as we draw closer to God's will, which is in some to love God and to love our neighbors. And if you want more details, go check out Romans chapter 12, verses 9 to 21. It says, let your love be genuine. Love one another and live in harmony. Extend hospitality to strangers. Love uh, and bless those who persecute you. Weep with those who weep. Associate, with, associate yourselves with the lowly and extend food and drinks to your enemies. And finally, today's lesson is asking us to give thanks and praise in spite of darkness. Alan Varhe and Joseph Harvard write, In spite of the darkness, we give thanks for the light. In spite of that death of a loved one, we give thanks for the promise of life. In spite of the hostilities and violence that will mark our culture, we give thanks for a new humanity. In spite of the evil that still asserts its power, we give thanks for the greater power of God that raised Jesus from the dead in triumph over death, darkness, and division. And they explain, this thankfulness translates into the way we posture ourselves toward darkness, that we will stay awake and carry the light in spite of darkness with confidence in God. This is what it means to stay awake. So my sisters and brothers in Christ, who are journeying together amidst darkness, let us remember these words and carry the light of Christ daily. Slipper, awake! Rise from the dead, and Christ will shine upon you. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now I invite you to rise as you are able and let us sing together our hymn of response, This is My Father's World.
These are complex times. Let us look carefully how you walk, not blundering along, along with like fools, but as those who are wise with the wisdom of Christ. Wherever we go, whatever happens to us, we will give, we will give thanks to, the, to our Lord. So go, grace and mercy and peace from God the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit will be with you today and always. Amen.